number of people ask me uh, to do a tutorial on hold and item. There are three major methods for teaching a hold, um, and they're all valid. They all work on the three types. Number one is shaping. I don't want to go into shaping today because shaping is a big topic all on its own. Uh, the second method is something called adduction. Now, adduction is when we use two cues and we actually create a third behavior. So the example that I always use for adduction is roll yourself up in a blanket. Uh, so the two cues are hold the corner, pick up, um, and roll over. And in the beginning when you're training this, your dog picks up, and then they drop it, and then they roll over, they pick up, and then they drop it, and then they roll over, and at some point it clicks and they go, oh, this and this, not this, then this. And when your dog makes that connection, they pick up and they roll over, and then you get your third brand new trick, roll into a blanket. Now with hold, those two cues are pick up and wait. So your dog has to have a really good idea of what pick up means, and a really strong idea of what weight means. And there's no clear way of explaining to them uh, that you've got to hold the ball and wait. So that's where people get really frustrated. There's, there's very little room for adding steps in there um, and we're just waiting for our dogs to figure it out and if they don't we're sort of left adrift. My third method is designed to give dogs a reason for holding. So rather than the abstract notion of just figure it out, do the thing that makes no sense, hold on to the object, um, we're going to teach them that there's a purpose for hold. I find that dogs just want to get stuff done really fast so that they can get to their treat. Um, and usually they're thinking, as soon as I drop it, I get my treat. So they really aren't thinking, I've got to hold this. They're thinking, where do I put this? Where do I drop it? How do I throw it? What do I do with this ball to get my treat? So they're trying every other behavior apart from a nice, calm, steady hold. So let's fix that. Okay, so you will need to teach hold a few things. Uh, you're going to need an object that your dog wants to put in their mouth. Uh, now for me, I'm using a ball because I know that when I roll it, he'll want to pick it up. Uh, and you'll also need um, a bowl or a box. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this ball away. Percy's going to go fetch it. And when he comes back, I'm going to hold this bowl underneath his mouth. Now if your dog does not fetch, just hand them the object. It might even be food, like a carrot. Um, and hold the ball underneath their mouth and click the moment the ball, ball goes in the bowl. So he's going to go fetch his object. I'm going to brandish that ball at him. And when the ball goes in the bowl, I'm going to click. Okay. And we're going to make uh, we're going to make it a little bit harder. So this time the ball is going to move less, and I want him targeting it. I still might help him out just a bit, but I want him to actually move towards the bowl rather than the bowl moving towards him. And eventually you get this behavior where your dog knows where the ball is supposed to go and they just put the ball away. So what does this behavior have to do with the hold? This behavior, your dog is just trying to get the ball in the bowl as fast as possible so that they can get their click and their treat. What happens if the ball is not available and then it suddenly is? Your dog may actually come over and be like, um, how do I do this? Oh, there I go. And they pop the, the ball in. Now he's on his way back, the ball is not available. And now it is available. So there's a moment there where he's waiting for the ball to become available so that he can drop his ball in. And that wait time is a hold. And I might move the ball around so he's kind of like, how do I, how do I, how do I? Yes, good. And you want to start with very short amounts of weight. You can also try moving the bowl away so that your dog has to slowly follow it. That can help. And then what I want you to do is make the bowl disappear and then reappear. So the bowl is away and then it's here. We're going to make it disappear and then boom, here it is. So he's on his way, it disappears, and then it reappears. Okay. So it's away, and then it's here. Good. So the bowl is away, and then it's here. So we have a split second hold while he's waiting for this bowl to appear. And at this stage, we're going to make it appear um, a little bit more uh, slowly. What I like to do is have it appear high up, 
And then come low enough that your dog can actually place the, the ball in the bowl. change to a hand. But if your dog knows fetch to hand, you can start up with your dog uh, dropping into your hand. Um, but at some point in this in this region of training, I want you to change over so that your your dog is now waiting to give the ball to your hand. Hold. Yeah, see how he's sat and he's now waiting a little bit more patiently for this. Okay. Hold. Good. Now we're cooking. Hold. Good. Hold. Good. Percy. Hold. being able to hand it to them, being able to pose your dog, and then increase the duration. So what that might look like when you're finished with it is this, sit, sit, hold, sit, oops, sit, hold. Do you see how my hand cue has developed from this, this like, jazzy hand weight signal that I had before. Sit. Hold. Please let me know how you get on with this. Um, and especially if you were stuck before, if this unsticks you, let me know because uh, that would be super awesome to hear about. Um, and yeah, good luck. Uh, have fun teaching your dog to hold stuff. <laughs>